Ladies and gentlemen, the undisputed killer king of the Cretaceous, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Come on, Sam. There must be a soft side to the champ somewhere deep inside. Ellie, look out! The Boneheads are back. That's my all-time favorite cousin, Alan. I'm your only cousin, Sam. And you're doing such a great job. It's time for another delicious and nutritious dinosaur mystery. Today's question comes to us all the way from Paris. Paris? Paris, Illinois, that oh. is. <laughs> Linda Kotcher writes, Dear Sam and Alley, my favorite dinosaur is Tyrannosaurus Rex. When I was a kid, I used to like Godzilla movies. Now that I'm in fourth grade, I want to know what T-Rex was really like. Who was the real T-Rex? That's an awesome question, Linda. And yes, T-Rex was an awesome dino. So we're going to make your question our equally awesome question of the day. Who was the real T-Rex? He was the meanest, nastiest, baddest hombre to ever walk this planet. A fugitive on the run from the laws of nature. We've got everything you wanted to know about T-Rex, but we're afraid to ask. Wait a minute, we're not supposed to be here. We're supposed to be here, Wyoming. You're probably wondering what's so special about Wyoming. Well, this is where most of the clues about T-Rex have been uncovered. This is also home to dino detective extraordinaire, Bob Bakker. Dr. Bob, can I ask you a few questions about T-Rex? Sure. Excellent. You know, T-Rex isn't the biggest dinosaur. Brontosaurus is much bigger. T-Rex is not even the biggest meat eater. There are a couple of guys that have heads that are longer. But I'll tell you, T-Rex still wins the prize for being the meanest, strongest biter ever. When it clamped down on those huge teeth, it was crushing through bone like no other meat eater of any sort of any time. So T-Rex deserves its reputation. Not the biggest, but the meanest, the deadliest bite in the universe. And here they go again, doing what they do best. This time it looks like a family squabble. These guys would fight anyone, including their brother and sister Rexes. But there has to be more to T-Rex than a mouthful of fangs. Okay, then let's check out the latest from the fossil record. Well, there's no better place to do that than out here in the badlands of Alberta, Canada. And here comes bonehead detective Phil Curry. Good thing, because he's a bona fide T-Rex expert. And he's going to tell us why the badlands are the best place to find T-Rex bones. The thing that allows Tyrannosaurus to be preserved in this part of the world is the fact that they were living on a coastal lowland and there was a tremendous amount of sediment coming in from the mountains that were rising to the west at that time. So there were large rivers running across the coastal lowland and if the Tyrannosaurus uh, body happened to fall in the water then it had a very good chance of being buried complete and uh, fast burial is one of the most critical factors in terms of uh, preserving an animal that large. That means T-Rex bones lasted so long here because the water covered them so quickly. Yep, layers of muck and sediment eventually turn them into fossils. Back in T-Rex's day, this part of the world was covered with water. There was actually a sea running right through North America. It was called the Niobrara Sea. There were also these rivers all over the place, so the chances of dying in the water and getting buried fast by the muck were pretty good. And that's why this area is such a Tyrannosaurus gold mine. Check out all the different places where fossil clues were found. Monsters.
monsters like T-Rex lived all over the world, but this is still the only place for hardcore T-Rex groupies. Hey, I know another place you can find T-Rex. Oh yeah, Sammy? Where's that? In a magical animated place, just around the corner. Nothing like seeing an old friend. Now let's get close to the bone for the real facts of the case. Hey, everyone remember the three parts of dinosaur history? Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous? Now right here, good old evolution introduced a guy by the name of Eoraptor. He was a little dog-sized, two-legged, meat-eating machine. And over the next 150 million years, Eoraptor evolved in a big, mean, and nasty way. And the next thing you knew, you had yourself old T-Rex. He stomped onto the scene right here, about 68 million years ago. But after a few million years of kicking dino butt, extinction went boom. Second, Sammy, let's move forward to the present. Or at least, pretty darn close, the early 20th century. It's hard to believe, but the first Tyrannosaurus Rex was only discovered about a hundred years ago. The very first bonehead detective on the case was named Barnum Brown. The first T-Rex bone he ever saw was in an office. It was being used as a paperweight. The fossil paperweight had come from a place called Hell Creek, Wyoming. So Bonehead Barnum loaded up the truck and went on the first ever T-Rex bone hunt. It took him six years, but it was worth it. He put together the fossil clues to build the first real T-Rex. Hollywood loved the idea of dinosaurs as much as museums did, and they took their version of T-Rex to the silver screen. Now, no dino detective loves a good dino movie more than Dr. Bob Bakker, but he wants to set the record straight on a few points. Like, what was T-Rex's world really like? Well, right now, we dig up T-Rex and Triceratops in Wyoming and Montana and the Dakotas. These places are high. They're dry. They're really hot in the summer. They're incredibly cold in the winter with blizzards. That's now. But when T-Rex lived, it was flat and very low and incredibly hot and humid nearly all year round and steamy. It was like the Gulf Coast of the U.S. right now. If you want to get an impression of what T-Rex was like when it was alive, go south. Go way south. Go way down to Louisiana. Go to New Orleans and still go south. And bonehead Phil Curry agrees. By the time Tyrannosaurus was living in North America, most of the modern families of plants and animals had already appeared on the Earth. Consequently, the world that Tyrannosaurus lived in may not have been as foreign as we think it is. And you would have crocodiles and turtles and uh, lizards and snakes and all these things. They would have been very familiar to us today. The difference would have been that the large animals, which today are large mammals at that time, would have been dinosaurs. Gosh, Phil, as card-carrying mammal kids, that sounds like a pretty big difference to us. Next, we're going to crack open the case on T-Rex's kids. No good hunt for the real T-Rex would be complete without a look at life around the house. We'll be right back. 